Welcome back everyone. In this video we are going to take a look at how to make a chart involving science, math, number versus numbers data. So in a previous videos when we made our chart we had things like words like dog, cat, bird and maybe how many of each you had. Now we have a situation where we have numbers that are going to be on the x-axis going left to right and we have numbers that tell us how you know, high and low our line or bars are going to go. Now, this is a special type of graph for a special reason, and I want to show you what not to do, because a lot of students will do it the wrong way. So here's the wrong way, doing it totally manually. So here we go. I'm going to insert, and I'm going to maybe pick a line chart with the dots. Now, I didn't select any data, so it's all blank. So I'm going to quickly grab the data to fill this. Right click, select data, add a series. The series name will be temperature. Let's clear that out and grab the temperatures. Perfect. I edit the labels or the categories and I want my time to be on the bottom. Perfect. Done. Okay, not too long. Now look at this chart and see why your math teacher, let me get the temperature out of there, see why your math teacher would not like this chart. And some of you will get it right away, some of you will just not care or not know, but here it is. Look at the axis on the bottom. This is something that you probably notice and realize, yeah, the math science teachers don't like this. This is the time in minutes, but look at how the time's progressing. Zero minute, one minute, five minutes. Whoa, it just did a four minute gap. Seven, eight. The spacing between the time is not the same, right? It's the scale. And that's because our data, which we told it to use as the labels, isn't one minute at a time, right? There is a jump of four there. But what you'd like in a real science math graph is, well, the five shouldn't be so close to the one. The five should be out farther, right? If you want the line to look right, you want the scale on the bottom to be nice and evenly spaced. Like these bars should be like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. You need some sort of even, nice scale on the bottom. Now, even though this graph isn't lined to the person looking at it, it sort of makes it look like the water had a hard time heating up here. Then it heated up a lot and then the heating sort of cooled down a bit you know or slowed down a bit as it went that's not a very accurate picture what you're trying to show the person so here's what you do we do not do the line chart so I just delete it here's the only type of chart in Excel or if you're using another spreadsheet program that'll do this for you you go insert the scatter and it's also known as the X You'll see there, it's also known as the XY scatter. Let me go here. I'm just trying to get off there. There we go. Also known as the XY scatter chart. Just like the name implies, you're going to give it a set of X values. You're going to give it the set of Y values. And it's going to draft this out like a math science person would. So here we go. Let's take the scatter graph with the lines and the dots connected. And it was no data. Let's go fill the data in. It's a very similar to before. Um, let's go right click, select data. We need to add a series. So let's go add series name, temperature, X values. Now remember what X is. X is this axis here on the bottom. So the X values, that's the numbers of the time. And the Y values, make sure to clear that out click and drag and hold that down and that's it hit OK and notice you don't even care about this the edit button is off and just click OK done notice the spacing now it's automatically determined the best spacing 0 2 4 6 8 10 12 and it's got your temperature scale perfect of course you'd want to do layout add your titles your labels Axis, legend, whatever else you need, right? Probably get rid of the legend there. 
And that's a good picture that shows what the water did. Pretty well, this is what water does. It heats pretty evenly until the very end, right? Just before it reaches boiling. That's a much better picture, and that's what your science math teacher wants to see on a graph. Thanks for watching. There'll be another video where we give you a few little tips about uh, the axes and a few little extras you can throw in there. But that's really the hardest type of graph you'd ever have to do, and that's not that hard. Good luck.